One of the success stories of the Islamic finance market in Nigeria since 2014 has been in Sukuk bond issuance in the nation. Welcome to another interesting edition of the Islamic Finance Weekly where we discuss key developments in the non-interest finance market. In this episode, we'll be discussing revisiting Sukuk issuances and opportunities for driving inclusive economic growth in Nigeria. At the moment, Nigeria has raised over 362 billion naira through the issuance of three rounds of Ijara Sukuk to finance road infrastructure across the six geopolitical zones. On the significance of Sukuk as one of the viable instruments in Islamic finance, we would like to take it through the views of experts, analysts, and the academia on Sukuk and Nigeria's economy. So I would like you to give us further insight into the Sukuk bond, which Nigeria listed last year. Okay. And uh, from research, Malaysia is a global leader in the issuance of Sukuk. How can this form of Islamic finance boost economic growth in Nigeria? Okay, um, that's a good question. Uh, but be, be, uh, for the sake of uh, our listeners, uh, to know this to cook and also to know the, the, the components of Islamic finance, I think I would like to elaborate more. Uh, the Islamic finance has the banking sector and it has the capital sector or capital market sector and then it has social finance sector and it has also insurance which is called takaful. So basically you have four broad areas under Islamic finance, put them together, of course each one there are prohibitions such as uh, non-interest in Islamic in bank, in capital market, in takaful, and, and all other uh, components. Okay, now, I have asking about the Sukuk. Sukuk is one of the major instruments uh, of the contemporary Islamic finance globally. You are right that Malaysia is leading. Sukuk is a certificate, just like Islamic bond, put it this way, simply. Uh, you know bond people invest their money uh, free interest, uh, I mean uh, risk free uh, to buy the bond and then they get interest at the end of the day. But Sukuk, basically you are not dealing with money only. It's not only paper, it has to be backed with some assets. That's what is called asset base and that's also what is called asset back. Okay, asset base is Okay, let's say like the federal government of Nigeria, Sukuk, the first issuance in 2017 and the second issuance in 2018 are both actually asset, ba asset base. Okay, asset base, meaning they are futuristic. When the money was generated, there was no asset on ground. But then that money will be used to construct asset. What is that asset? I'm sure we know the roads about 25 roads in the first issuance, uh, federal highways, uh, where uh, the, the, the scoop money was used to construct those, uh, most of them completed. And uh, as you know, the second scoop already extension of the first scoop. And then asset backed is like, you have a building or you have a, an asset, and based on that asset, you issue scoop for people to buy. So when they buy, they partake. It's like they become shareholders in that particular asset. So this is called asset back. So this principle of connection between the, the finance and the real sector economy is keeping Islamic finance very, very stable, stable and robust for quite a period of time because it's not just paper money. Anytime you have money uh, issued or you buy or you sell, there is something backing that particular transaction. So this is uh, Skook in general. Now, how do we use the Skook to develop or to sustain our nation? Uh, I think the, it is very evident that uh, we have seen the outcome of the Skook, the federal government, federal government Skook, we have seen them uh, whenever you go around the country, the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria have all benefited from the federal government Sukuk. So therefore, this is instrument which we can use to build our infrastructure, our you know, deficit, the infrastructure deficit, the housing deficit, the roads, the airport, whatever you can think of, you can use uh, instruments like Sukuk to build it, 
to construct it and to uh, st uh, you know grow your economy. So it has a lot of benefit, a lot of prospect, and uh, it, it's just sustainable. Nigeria is, has a quite has a lot of mileage to cover in regards to the economic outlook. The projection for Nigeria is five, which means that we still have a long way to go. As a result of that, Nigeria needs to work on its economy, works on its GDP, works on its reserve, in order to improve the outlook against 2022. Considering the uncertainty in the global economy caused by the coronavirus disease, Dr. Davili made recommendations on how Islamic finance asset can support investors. In terms of uh, Islamic finance to support investors' funds at this time, the global economy is actually undergoing a very strong um, challenge right now. But uh, having said that, in terms of safety and uh, um, uh, reduced risk, um, one of the sukuk that I would suggest, which is the only one we actually currently have in Nigeria that is a bit popular, is the sovereign sukuk, which was always subscribed in the last two outings the federal government had. And why would I suggest that? Because it's definitely asset that fact, you know. It's either used for roads by the federal government or like we have in Oshin State for schools. So there is an asset that um, is backing that particular investment. So as a result of that, um, I would suggest that um, we should um, still invest in sovereign support. Going by the pace at which Islamic finance is developing in Nigeria and the enthusiasm with which the Nigerian investment community had received the past support issuances, uh, yes, one can be quite confident that retail support issuance will thrive and it will do so, it will do well. Uh, but yes, uh, while there's a lot more to be done, I think that the country has an enabling environment for the support issuance. The development in the uh, Nigerian uh, capital market it is, uh, is, is a very significant development, uh, especially with the successful issuance of three uh, separate schools uh, in the country. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, these separate schools, schools have uh, focused on uh, infrastructural development and uh, there are yet so many uh, areas that this school has to uh, address. Uh, as you say, the, the sustainable cities uh, in Nigeria are, are very important. The, the government in the future, uh, uh, the issuance of schools uh, should also focus on other areas, as you mentioned, like, for example, like the health, like the sustainable yeah. city, like education. In terms of success, success, uh, sustainable cities, the, the issuance, the, the, the next issuance or the coming issue, issue, issuance of SECOG, uh, should uh, uh, focus on uh, the provision or the SCOOC should be also the green SCOOC. The green SCOOC are the, one of the instruments used to issue, uh, to finance sustainable cities or uh, environmentally friendly uh, projects. So green SCOOC has been used by many countries, many Muslim countries, to, uh, to finance uh, sustainable city, uh, the, the uh, environment, environmentally friendly uh, projects. So the Nigerian government in the uh, next issues uh, can focus on uh, sustainable city in terms of uh, provision of green school to uh, finance, uh, for example, electricity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the solar electricity, electric solar power energy. Uh, yeah. to, uh, yes, to also uh, finance uh, uh, other uh, uh, environmentally friendly sources of energy, renewable energy, uh, like the as as solar or the, uh, the, 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 the other, for example, which are used for the tides or the wind. Uh, and other uh, uh, sources of energy, uh, which are, I think, uh, is, uh, are, are the uh, most needed uh, areas in Nigeria. Electricity is one of the uh, uh, sector which has to be uh, developed. So, Sukuk, Green Sukuk, is one of the instruments, Islamic finance instruments, which will yeah. cater for this. Welcome back. 
recent interview from the 2021 IFN on Hair Forum with the Director General Debt Management Office of Nigeria, Patient Oniha, shows that DMO has been at the forefront of the Sukuk issuances between 2017 to 2020. According to her, Sukuk Issuance is an initiative of DMO to raise local borrowing through the issuance, which has so far been successful. Take a listen. The Sukuk uh, Issuance, the initiative by the Debt Management Office Nigeria to you know, raise some of our uh, local borrowing through the issuance of Sukuk has been uh, successful. Uh, and I'll add the word increasingly successful. So the first time we issued was in uh, 2017. Okay, and uh, some of, we invested a lot in physical roadshows, you know, apart from uh, using the media, but there was a lot of uh, physical roadshows and there were comments, you know, within the environment, like um, he said, okay, so we have a, a very large population of uh, both religions and then the other religions. So, Clearly, uh, that first one was a tough one, but it, it was successful. We're looking for 100 billion naira, and we did get subscriptions of about 105% of that. Okay, so the second one, we learned from the first one and tried to do things a bit differently. We still had physical road shoes. Uh, again, we looked for 100 billion naira. We got um, 132, so that was good. Uh, but the third one, obviously, is... Um, uh, which was last year, and that was interesting because that was the COVID era. So we really couldn't uh, do any uh, physical road shows, but it did help. Mm. We had been out in the market twice. So like um, most people did, we used the, the media electronic platforms to market the Sukuk. And um, mm. we got subscriptions of about um, 400 and uh, almost 470%. So we actually wanted to raise 150 billion Naira and um, ended up issuing 162.57 uh, billion. So I would say it's been successful. It's changed the landscape in the sense that um, the public is now aware, like I said, we've invested massively in uh, in advertising, whether print, whether electronic, social media, just name it, you will find us there all the time. And if you look at our website today, you will see some things as well about the Sukuk. So I think one of the things that we like to do as a, a DMO is to sort of be the pioneer, the initiator. So we believe that uh, in addition to raising money for the government, we've created significant um, awareness. In addition to raising money for the government, the DG of DMO noted that there has been significant awareness from the media due to the fact that Sukuk funds were tied to specific projects. But let me say from the feedback we get, apart from the media and the awareness, because the funds were tied to specific projects and those projects were labeled. So if you're traveling by road, you will see a big Sukuk sign where it starts and where it ends. So that gave confidence to Nigerians as a whole. Okay, this is where this money is going to and the road will be better for me to use. Uh, I think that uh, gave a significant boost and trust. She gave further details on the activities to watch in the debt capital market in third quarter of 2021. I think if we look at the media term, so we're talking the year 2021, certainly we're working on uh, a Sukuk issuance. So we already had, um, I think we've even received, um, we've received the expression of interest. So we're in the process of appointing transaction parties. Okay, so I, I expect that by the third quarter of this year, we'll be out. I would say it should be fairly the same structure. Tenor may be different. It depends on uh, where market is at that time, what cost okay. is. At I have things like that. So we'll look at all of those and then see what works with our, our medium term debt management strategy. So it will still be the simple Ijara. Uh, mm -hmm. But long term, okay, because market understands it, we also understand it. It will also be for roads. That's the approval we've received. You know, we've been using it for road projects. Um, so, but going forward, uh, and this may not be in the immediate term, may not be next year, we need to. Uh, sort of upscale the Sukuk issuance to include other projects. Okay, maybe standalone projects as uh, yeah. apart from roads. Obviously, everybody who lives in Nigeria comes to Nigeria knows we need to improve on roads. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, it could extend to um, other projects. But I think um, more importantly, we would be looking, hopefully, with all the arrangements going on now to being able to support projects that will be revenue generating to service 
this book. Okay, so it's a journey, and I think we're we are the early stages. We're we're grateful for the support, but that's what it will be. Okay, that also speaks to even if we're to issue a sukuk in another currency, it has to fit into certain parameters. Patience only has shared a perspective on the Securities and Exchange Commission 10-year capital market master plan and how Islamic finance fits into the strategy. I think the capital market uh, master plan, as it were, the subsisting one, already recognized uh, non-interest banking. Okay, so it started with the central bank first allowing non-interest banking. So the, uh, the capital master plan uh, recognizes non-interest uh, financial products. Let me not, okay, because this is capital market now. So there are provisions. If you look at the key regulators for the capital market, there are provisions there. And um, the, the Nigerian uh, Stock Exchange um, has also been very supportive of new products. Same with the FMDQ OTC, because we are out, like I said, to raise funds for the government, but while doing that, develop the market. Okay, so the way the SEC has run it is to have a committee, you know, work with it on uh, various initiatives, uh, one of which is the capital market master plan. So it already has provisions for non-interest bearing products. But I think where it is now, which has been uh, reviewed, I think the product is reasonably uh, supported. Same with fixed income, other fixed income securities. As you know, their tax exempt charges were dropped uh, or fees were reduced. Many years back when we're trying to develop the conventional uh, fixed income securities market. So there are uh, already features, you know, policies, uh, guidelines that support the fixed income uh, securities market, including um, uh, non-interest banking products. So I think for me, really, what I always say to develop the market, whether conventional or non-conventional, is we really need to have uh, a bigger, more diversified base of investors for all the products. We really need to have that, especially as uh, the government looks to, you know, huge investments in infrastructure, for which the funds may not necessarily all come from the government. So if we're yeah. looking at um, PPP arrangements, for instance, those uh, other parties will need to raise funds as well in the market, whether those would be Sukuk or conventional products. Uh, either way, the market has to be there to provide the funding. So we need to create a lot, a lot more awareness, uh, build a lot more confidence. And um, I think the market already has a good infrastructure. I mean, in terms of trading, transparency, information. I mean, you just go to these two websites for fixed income securities, you get everything you want. You don't need to call the DMO, for instance. What's right. the price of your bond? Where can I find the market value? From your desk, you get all of those. So I think for me, that major challenge is uh, growing the investor base significantly, mm -hmm. growing and diversifying. She added that a major challenge for deepening the market is growing the investor base. If you just go back a bit, we were dealing for a number of years with wholesale investors, okay? Mm -hmm. and, um, we have accounts at the central bank, they have accounts at the central bank, we have an electronic conduction system, but that was for the wholesale market. Uh, so we've started, we then started coming to the retail market and you realize that those are the ones you need to yeah. create awareness for, uh, mm -hmm. then make it easy for them to uh, subscribe, which is extremely for the support because we were focused also on uh, financial inclusion. Remember, I said when we're raising money, it's not only about funding, because quite candidly, the money we raise in, using support, we can raise it through MPN bonds without any effort, you know, just do the advert and wait for the bits uh, to come. But there's a developmental objective for that. There's financial inclusion, there's uh, deepening the market, uh, uh, you know, which was made reference to earlier. Okay, so what we started working on from last year is um, to use FinTech, um, to enable a lot of the retail investors to then participate in the market just from their mobile phones. Actually, what we did, so I, I listened to some presentation, I think somewhere in Uganda, I think Kenya had done something using FinTech. Mm. So uh, the party who worked on it, I simply then uh, engaged him informally to speak to our own group last year and he advised us on how they had done it they still had some challenges it's not working perfectly but where we are now is uh, we actually have looked at three three bits working with three companies that say they can provide that service we have zeroed in on one and 
fine tuning the documents. So that would apply not just to Sukuk, but to our savings bond. You know, those are the two primary products for retail investors. In conclusion, the DG speaks on the outlook for DMO in the next 12 to 18 months on Sukuk in Nigeria. The one for this year will certainly be the same Jara okay. will still be Naira. And um, so what we'll be looking to do in, uh, and I can't say it will be next year, because really with government, there are processes you go through. Uh, and uh, for those who live around here, they know borrowing is very tightly regulated. So you need uh, various approvals. Then again, secondly, remember that the projects we are financing, the GMO doesn't own those projects, we are enablers with financing. So you have to really do a lot of engagement with the project owners and then uh, they get the understanding. You know, with the old products, we just raise the money, give them to treasury who gives to those um, agencies. But this one is different. There are rules and regulations. You know, you must produce documents, you must perform to get payments. So that's yeah. why I'm not, I'm a bit reluctant to commit that by next year, there will be, mm -hmm. you know, different varieties, but certainly we'll start uh, working on uh, uh, options, maybe variants. Like I said, from from our perspective, it will be good to get projects that generate revenue so they can pay for the support itself. So whatever that version of uh, non-interest banking is, we are available. Leveraging the Sukuk bond to finance early Nigeria's road infrastructure can be described as a strategic step by the federal government. Beyond the roads, it is expected that in the next one to two years, another round of Ijara Sukuk will be raised to support health, education, a clean environment, and even dynamic ventures that can transform Nigeria's socioeconomic landscape. We are using this medium to inform our viewers that Web TV will be hosting its Made in Islamic Finance webinar with the theme Islamic Finance and the Capital Market. The event will have in attendance the keynote speaker, Mr. Abdukadri Habas, Head of Department Securities and Investment Services, SEC Nigeria. It will also feature experts and analysts in the industry. The webinar is scheduled to hold on Wednesday, June 16, 2021, at 10 a.m. West African time. To participate at this event, register via the link showing on the screen. And that being us to the end of the show today, for more updates on Islamic finance news analysis and reports, log on to www.proshareng.com. Follow us on our social media platform displaying on the screen. Many thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and bye for now.